Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode one of the Luminary Agent Podcast. Uh, I am one of your co-hosts, Cody Martens, the founder and CEO of Luminary Agent, uh, formerly Top Left Creative, and I'm joined uh, by my co-host, Sarah Jacquier, who is our content director. Say hi, Sarah. Hey there. How's it going today? Doing well. This is pretty exciting, our first podcast. It's really exciting. Can't wait to talk with all of you. Sarah just commented that this is by far the most fun thing that we've done in quite a long time, and I have to agree with her. We've been really excited to like just look for ways to contribute more to the real estate community and to um, our audience, so I think this is going to be a really great way to do that. Yep, interacting with other realtors is one of the best parts of our job. Yeah, it's so honestly, much fun. it's better. I mean, because we spend most of our time in our home office. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, it's pretty great. So today we uh, wanted to talk and kind of do an intro uh, to uh, like the topic of social media. So we wanted to talk about uh, what we consider. Uh, the definition of social media to actually be um, why you should be using social media for your real estate business. Um, go over some general like best practices that we see as well as some not so great practices that we see. And just hope to kind of start this episode by providing you a nice overview of some more nitty gritty things that you can expect out of this podcast, but also provide you some real uh, tangible value uh, that you can implement in your real estate business. So yeah, there you have it. So Sarah, um, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about how you uh, personally and how we at Luminary Agent kind of define social media? Because I think that people use Social media, content marketing, digital marketing, a lot of this stuff, a lot of these words interchangeably. Um, so I just really want to make sure that people listening to the podcast have a really clear grasp on what we mean when we say, uh, you know, social media. Yeah, you know, I think everybody has a different definition of social media. And sometimes people use it just to mean Facebook. But obviously, there's so much more to social media than just Facebook. So I think we define it as podcasts, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, even blog posts, which are often posted to social media channels, um, video, anything that you're doing to connect with people and to consume content. Yeah, I think that's a really great definition. Um, I know that, you know, a lot of uh, prominent people in this space online, like Gary Vaynerchuk and others, you know, when they say social, they really just mean online, like anything that's done kind of through your cell phone, through an app, um, the way that you consume content online. So I think content marketing and social media become somewhat synonymous. And I think when we say social, we should think about it, you know, beyond just an actual Facebook post or Instagram post, but also you know, podcasting, blog posts, um, even Alexa flash briefings, you know, different things like that. So I think that's a good way to kind of set up uh, social media and how we're going to talk about it in this Mm -hmm. podcast. So awesome. Uh, One thing that I think uh, people don't always understand is the, the why behind why even you should use social media in your business. Um, Sarah, what do you think are... I mean, why should a realtor use social in their business? Like, what can it do for them? What's the point? Well, you know, if you don't use social media, then you're missing a lot of opportunities to really connect with people. One of the great things about social media is that it allows you to connect with people in a way that's not salesy, in a way that's very authentic and true. And if you aren't on social media, then you've lost all of the opportunities to do that. So... I think that it's so important to have a space where you can talk with your clients as if they're your friends. Hopefully they are your friends and you can treat them that way. And in the end, that just feels so much better to them and to you than if you're only reaching out to them via, you know, a sales call or something. 
Yeah, I think that's super true. Um, I think that, you know, social media can be used for two main things. I think number one, it can be used for sales. Um, you can use social media to sell things. You know, you can run ads to to showcase your listings. That's certainly an option. But I think that social media is much better and for most people is probably should be much uh, used more for what I would say call like brand building um, and, and not selling. And I think that the hard thing, I think the thing that a lot of people do wrong on social media is that they treat it as a sales tool instead of a branding tool. And really just you, you like totally said it correctly when you said that social media should be a place where people can get to know you, you know, and where you can really build a relationship with somebody on social media. I mean, if I think about people that I've known from 10 years ago, like we, maybe we haven't seen each other in the past five years, but I still feel connected to them because of social media. And I think that we should, we're really lucky in that way that we didn't have that, you know, 10 years ago. Like if you moved away and you didn't call and talk to somebody, you kind of lost touch with them. And now that's not the case, but that is like an excellent kind of way of showing that social media is not really meant for selling. It's meant for, it's just meant for being a human being and like, you know, staying in touch with people. You hear all the time people say that social media is, you should treat it kind of like an online cocktail party. You know, you wouldn't go to a party and start talking to people and start talking about your listings and the awards that you've won and, um, you know, the, how much business you sold last year. Yet that's often times the only thing that people post on social media and like yeah those things are great in every once in a while but they shouldn't be the main thing and they definitely shouldn't be all you're talking about it comes across as very inauthentic and very pushy which I don't think real estate agents want to come off that way Um, but in the last couple years I think it's changed where you really have to be personal on social media. You can't just sell, sell, sell all the time and expect that to get any good attention. You know, that just kind of blends in with all of the other mediocre salesy content that's out there. To really stand out, you have to be yourself. Yeah, I think that's super true. And, you know, one thing that we've been talking a lot about, especially about being yourself and kind of being like authentic and honest, is that I think a a lot of times realtors, you know, we want to work with the people that are like us. Like we want to work with people that we enjoy working with. That's, I think we got into this business because we want to help people, but we want to help like our kind of people, you know, because you want to work with people that you have things in common with. And the more you are yourself on social media and online, then the more you're going to attract those people that are like you. And the more you're going to quite frankly, enjoy your job. Right. Whereas if you're, if you are putting out a persona that is not you, that is that is inauthentic, and then when some, you know, you might attract people who aren't a best fit to work with you. And I think that a lot of people are doing that online. They think they need to be somebody different online that they do in real life. And the truth is that the more you can be your true self online, the more you give people the opportunity to connect with you in some way, you know, maybe you both like cycling, maybe you both like knitting, maybe you're both into collecting pogs. I mean, what, like, whatever, (laughs) whatever it is, right? Like the more things that you can give people to kind of grasp on and say, Hey, like, I like this guy. He seems like me. Then I think like the better off that you'll be. So Well, and then the great thing about that is when you connect with people that way, they know they want to work with you when they're ready to buy or sell a house or refer somebody, they just give you a call. You're not having to beg them to give you business. They just want to do it because they like you. Yeah. The funny thing is that, yeah, when you, when you do come from a branding point, the selling point kind of happens naturally, you know? And and I think that's really important to think about too, because I think a lot of us as realtors are social people. We want to... I mean, we want to connect with people, we want to have fun, we want to have friends, we want to enjoy our job and what we're doing. And 
And I think this gives us a chance to be more that and not be less that. So I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what are some things that, so one thing that I, I notice a lot that people do kind of wrong on social media is honestly, they, they want to be themselves and they want to be brand building, but really they're kind of selling in disguise. You know, I mm-hmm. think that they're, they're coming from a place of maybe they want to be salesy, but they don't, or they, they want to sell, but they don't want to be salesy. And to, so they try and cover it in the disguise of, of being helpful. Um, I mean, what are the things that you've seen online and how do you think realtors can kind of combat that blurring those lines, I guess? You know, I think it's what I was kind of just saying, which is that if you're helpful and you give people the information that you need, if you're willing to just give all of that away, um, you give away the local info and um, give people what they really want to hear from you, you be their local expert, um, then the sales are just going to come. They'll remember you. They'll know that you're the one that they want to work with and you won't have to sell to people. I think you're right that people feel like doing good marketing on social media is selling yourself and being that salesy persona. Um, And I've seen so many posts, especially on Instagram about, you know, hey, here's this house and I'm here to help you and I'm here to help you find exactly what you want. And it does sound helpful but it also comes across as pushy, especially when that's the only thing that you're posting, when you're not giving away other helpful information that people can just take that has nothing to do with selling. Um, so I think it's an easy trap to fall into because I think it's part of feeling like you're doing a good job and that you're being successful. Um, but I also know that people do not like being sold to on social media. That's not why they're going to Facebook or Instagram. It's not because they want somebody to sell them the perfect house. So I think you have to really honor what Facebook and Instagram and other social media platforms were meant for um, and meet people there. And I think they respect that a lot more. Yeah, I think that's that's super true. Um, I've been seeing a lot, you know, it's New Year's, we're recording this and it's what, January 3rd. And yeah. I've been seeing a lot of, you know, if your New Year's goals involve buying or selling real estate, make sure you give me a call. And honestly, I'm not going to like downplay that that's never something that you should say, but it should definitely be like a 30 to 1 ratio that you're coming right across. Like give, 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 and then ask, you know, and you, you need to be telling a story too, like, I think that people today are smart enough to know that if you're posting about real estate and you're posting about helping your clients and you're telling their story about they, you know, struggled for six months to save up for a down payment and like get their credit together or they dealt with, uh, you know, job loss and we worked through that or like whatever the story is, every person has a story, every house, every transaction has a story. If you can tell those stories, people are going to connect with those stories and they're going to want to work with you. You don't have to say, please work with me, you know, call me, I'm here to help. Like you can, I just don't, I think that Realtors should err on the side of caution doing that because Mm -hmm. oftentimes that's all they do. And so I don't want to say that you shouldn't do that, but for most realtors, you probably shouldn't because that's all you're doing right now. So you need to definitely do a lot less of it. (laughs) Well, and the great thing about that micro storytelling that you're talking about that's so powerful on social media is that people get an idea of what's important to you, of what your values are, about what kind of a hard worker you are and how you negotiate without you having to brag about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so compelling. I would way rather hear a story about how hard a realtor worked and how the transaction maybe wasn't perfect but ended up fine than I want to see a testimonial on that realtor's page, you know? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's It allows me to connect to potentially like see myself in that scenario 
you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't need you to tell me, please, like, please work with me. Please give me your business. Like, I'm going to give you my business. I'm smart enough to make that connection. You know, like, if I want something, I'm going to get it. Um, I think that realtors oftentimes worry, well, if I'm not asking for the business, I'm not going to get it. And maybe face to face. If you're meeting with somebody in a coffee shop and you're like, hey, you know, if you know of anybody like I'm I'm always looking for new clients, I would love to refer the people that, you know, that's absolutely a conversation that you can have with someone over coffee or Mm -hmm. over a cocktail. It is not a conversation that you need to have to the masses over social media. That's just not once a day or (laughs) twice a day, you know, yeah, absolutely. It gets a bit excessive. Yeah, Totally. Totally. Um, What are some other like tips that you have or that you that you think that we should kind of talk about in this uh, intro about, you know, kind of defining social media, you know, what it's good, what it's good for and maybe what it's not good for as well? You know, I think um, one thing that's really important is you don't want people to forget that they followed you. You want to be a constant presence, but you want to be a constant positive presence. So like I said, you want to be giving people things that they care about. You want to tell them where the best holiday light shows are. Maybe take a picture of you at that holiday light show. Tell people how to get there or a tip for parking or, you know, give them some actually helpful information so that when you post, they know that you're giving them something that they should pay attention to. Um, there are so many opportunities for realtors to provide value like that. Um, they're out in the community a lot. They see things that other people don't necessarily see. Um, about events, about other businesses, about charities. I think realtors really can help build communities and can kind of be at the forefront of doing that, which is something that a lot of people care about. Um, But you have to put yourself out there and put that information out there. And, you know, I say like, what, 3% or less of your database at any given time may be interested in buying or selling, but everybody in your database is interested in where they live. And what's exactly. going on. So if you can tailor your content around that, then I think that you're, you know, it's really easy to be really successful. Um, and and also to your point about making sure that people remember that they followed you, you have to be consistent. You know, mm-hmm. it. Um, so many, I hear so many realtors say that I don't, uh, I don't get social media or I don't understand it or I'm not very technical well, okay, how much time have you spent doing it? You know, like yeah. like you can't sit down at a piano and expect to be able to play well right from the start. And if you don't understand how to hold your hands and how far apart your fingers need to be and, you know, how to how to touch certain keys at the same time to make a chord, how I mean, you're never going to be great at piano. And it's the same thing with social media like you, it's intentional. You have to be intentional about doing it and trying it and figuring it out. And guess what? You're going to suck at it for the first little while. Like the, your first hundred posts are not going to be that great, you know, but that's how you get better at it. And also it, that on authenticity, I think, comes out even more if you can just mm-hmm. be present on it. And the one thing, too, is like social media is not a fad. Like this is a part of everybody's daily life now. So you learned how to drive because it's a part of your daily life. You learn things all the time that you are going to have to do from here until the end of time. And social media is one of those things. We all learned how to use a computer. You know, we all learned how to type like that's just the way it works. And you need to make an intentional commitment to make social media a part of your life, not just a part of your real estate business, because it's where the world lives now. And I think that this, the more agents can make a commitment to social media and then, and then treat it like something that you're intentionally doing. Don't just be haphazard about it. And that will help with the consistency part, but it will also help with you learning it and with it becoming you know, more help with, with it becoming more comfortable. Like it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be freaking weird. 
you know, this podcast, the first time we've recorded a <laughs> podcast, it's weird, you know, like it, we spent 45 minutes before this, like <laughs> figuring out how our audio is going to work and like, where do we record from and how does this look and don't touch your microphone because it makes bumpy sounds and you know, like, yeah, that, fingers I mean, crossed that we get something good at the end. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. And this is total crap. Well, so what? <laughs> but like we're starting out just blind, but we're just doing. You know, and that's what's going to help us get better. Like our second episode is going to be better than the first one. The third one is going to be better than the second one. And we're going to keep going. And our 52nd episode of the end of the year is going to be awesome, you know, and that that's just how it works. So I think that people have this mind, something in their head that's telling them that if if it's not natural to me, then I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but it's not going to be natural at first. And it may never be natural, by the way. You may always yeah. feel weird about it, but that doesn't mean that it's not something that you should do. Well, and I think, you know, we hear realtors talking about being concerned about being left behind with um, bigger companies coming out with ways to buy and sell your home without realtors. You know, it's a real concern, but social media. And doing it consistently is a way to stay relevant and to stay needed. So I don't think realtors can really afford to say social media. I'm not really going to do that. You know, I think it's critically important. Yeah, I totally agree. And the great, you know, the great thing about social is that social involves audio. It involves video. It involves written word. It involves pictures. Like you can pick the format that is most comfortable for you. Like I'm fairly comfortable in front of video. I, I I don't like love it, welcome it with open arms, but I, I'm fine with it. You know, I feel pretty good behind this microphone. I'm a good writer, but it takes so much brain power for me to write that it's not something that I often like our blog posts. Usually you write those, you know, and that like we've kind of picked our strengths a little bit. Um, and I think that that's the beauty of, of social media and social and online marketing in general is like you can pick the things that work well for you that you're that you think you can do best but they might not just be the most comfortable things but the other thing like on the flip side of that too like if your clients that you work with are really into video or they're all on Instagram or they're really into LinkedIn because you work with a lot of business professionals like maybe you that's the game you should up like maybe you should up your LinkedIn game because that's where your people are you know we can't fall into the trap of wanting people to come to us we need to go to them and to further that point a little bit, the beauty of social media is that it doesn't have to fit in a box that you've seen before. You can literally talk about things that you have never seen before if that's what you want to talk about. There's no right way or wrong way to do it as long as you're not being too salesy. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, Sarah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> a Reese's sounds so good. This keto diet, it does I'm on the really keto good. diet and... Mm. Uh, uh, no Reese's for you. I feel great, but no, that's rough. I miss my sugar. <laughs> Reese's are pretty amazing. Uh, my kids may have gotten some in their stockings and some of them may have disappeared. Oh, yeah, obviously. Night. I mean, what's the so, point of having kids if you can't steal their candy? Clearly, that's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I don't really believe that. <laughs> so uh, oh, we've talked a lot about um, you know, social media and, and being authentic and making sure that you are being you. Um, is there anything like, what are some other things that we hear a lot from our clients that are, that stop them from starting social media? Um, what are some, you know, questions that we get a lot? Um, like, I know one is like, how often should I be posting? Or I don't want to inundate yeah, I don't my people. Post too much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What are what are some of those questions that we get? And then what are some of the answers that we often give to our clients? Because we get asked those questions a lot. We do. And let's start with that one about posting too much or how often to post. Really, unless you're posting about 10 times a day, I would say just don't worry about it at all. You really don't need to worry about it. I can't. I really don't think I've ever come across a real estate social media account where I was like, 
dang, they're posting too much. You know, this yeah. is just overkill. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. Um, I just don't, I have looked at a lot of accounts and that's not something I've seen. And like Cody said earlier, nobody is going to see all of your posts. So I just would never worry about that. I think you can safely just let that concern completely go. Never need to worry about it again. I do think that that's kind of a hang up, a excuse people like to use to just not post at all because they don't, you know, they want to be polite. They don't want to inundate people with posts. Throw that excuse away. It's not a good excuse. Yeah. Um, well, just start posting. The algorithms are make it so that you your people can't see every post that you put out anyway. So yeah, if you won't. want your account in general to be seen by more people, you need to be putting out more posts that mm -hmm. give people the chance to see it. Because the other funny thing is, is that you often have no idea which post is going to get what kind of a reaction. Like right. we have seen, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time and every day you and I are like that post <laughs> did well. Like what the hell? <laughs> I know. I know one time I posted something. I don't, we don't usually post things this generic, but one time several years ago, we posted this fun article that I found about um, getting a tattoo of your house. That's and on right. a couple of our clients accounts, it did so well. And I was a little flabbergasted, but it started some really great conversations and it was cool to see. So really you never know. You yeah, just it's never true. Know it's get. super true. It's kind of weird. Um, so, so what's again. what's something? I think that you know, I think that you should be worried about posting too little. Like that's the question yeah. that you should that's be asking yourself. You <laughs> right? Am I yeah, posting ask, enough? Flip that question around. <laughs> Yeah. Um, another common one we get is people want to make sure they're posting at the best time of day. And again, that's really out of your control. You might post something, but it may not get any traction until the next day or the next day. And there's no way to control that or what time of day. It depends on who sees it and who comments on it, who yeah. shares it. I mean, there's just literally no way to control it. So you can post anytime you want to. Well, and honestly, I think that the best time of day. That's something that bigger brands need to worry about. Um, right. Truly. I mean, if you have 500 people who you're friends with on Instagram, the time of day doesn't make a damn difference. Like it just yeah. doesn't, you know, it's once you, it's another one of those like excuses or, mm -hmm. and it's not, you know, it's not like it's necessarily just an excuse. Like some people generally, they have these valid concerns because Right. I'll use every like if I were to Google like best time of day to post, I mean, there would be millions of results of blog posts telling you the best times of day to post. And so you you're so worried about doing it right about all these yeah. different things that you're not posting anything. You get analysis paralysis. You I mean, I, yeah. I get this way. I'm a human being. Yeah, I feel that way, too. But it, you just have to throw all of that out the window. You know, you really do. Yeah. It's, it's weird, but it's true. Don't, I mean, these concerns are small enough that they're not worth worrying about. Yes, there might be a slightly better time of day to post, but it's really not worth taking the effort to figure that out. I just, I say over and over again to myself as well as anybody else, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. The oh, good is posting. So just true. post. <laughs> it is so true. That's such a good one. It really is like perfection and I, I, I meet with a lot of realtors and I always mention perfectionism and every single one of them's like, oh, I'm such a perfectionist. And I'm like, <laughs> man, like me too. I get it. But that is yeah. killing your, your social game. It really is. Well, and if you post something that's not great, it'll be gone really soon. Once it's down <laughs> in your feet a little bit, nobody's going to see it ever again anyway. So you know yeah. what? Just learn from it and move on. I mean, I don't remember that my own stuff that I posted from a couple <laughs> weeks ago, let alone, let alone what somebody else has posted from last week. Let's be yeah. honest. <laughs> I mean, these are, this is a low stakes game, right? You want to post a lot, but if everything's not perfect, it's going to be just fine. Yeah, it, it really will, is. It will be gone and everyone will forget about it before you know it. The important thing is that they're seeing you over and over again. Yep. So that's what they'll remember. Um, I think another common concern we get is people don't know which platforms to post to and how they're different. And that yeah. is maybe several more podcasts. But um, yeah. 
I think it's really good to start with Facebook because it's a little bit easier. It's one where pretty much everybody is. I think that if you're just kind of getting your feet wet, Facebook is a pretty good place to start. And I find this interesting too. We've been hearing a lot lately. A lot of clients have been he- saying like, oh, well, people are leaving Facebook in droves. I've been hearing all about yeah. it. And I'm like, you are logged into Facebook right now. <laughs> like you were p- checking your Facebook before I walked into this meeting. And that's just like this anecdotal thing that people are hearing about. But yeah. the truth is that they still have, you know, one and a half billion daily active users. Like, pe- like yeah. yeah, some people are leaving Facebook, but it's still absolutely where a lot of people are. So I think you need to throw that, throw that anecdotal, you know, that, yeah. that piece of, of, um, that snippet that people keep saying online, you need to toss yeah. that out the window. Um, it's and true. just and just post. Yeah, I think I mean, the short answer is is all of them really like you need to be on as many of them as you can be because you never know which one you're going to win at. Now, I would say that you don't want to be really crappy at all of them because you're trying to be on all of them at once. So if you need to only pick one or two or three platforms that you kind of rock then that's fine. You can do that. But one thing I would also advise people, and this is something that we do, is you know you can cross promote and you can use things in different areas. So we're recording this podcast. The main purpose of this is a podcast, but we're also recording the video portion of it because I'm going to put it on our YouTube channel and we're going to cut up snippets of this and use it for social media. So I'm able to take we're able to take this one piece of content that we've created and we're able to distribute it in lots of different ways. You know, we could turn the advice, we could re-listen to this and turn this into a blog post or a mm-hmm. or a medium article. Like I mean there's lots of different ways to redo this content and the, and the more you do like the bigger pieces of content, like if you do a podcast or you start a video show, it's really easy to kind of feed the smaller pieces of social mm-hmm. media throughout the week. Um, so I, I mean, to that point, like I would probably advise people, you should start some piece of like cornerstone content that you can then use to, to feed your other, you know, daily pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we use our blog posts for our clients to do a lot of other things that are really important. And without those blog posts, it would take much more time to do everything else. Yeah, the blog posts that we write for our clients, we turn into social media posts and we turn into video script ideas for them to record Mm -hmm. so that they are putting themselves on social media, but using the content that we've written for them as a backbone to kind of Mm -hmm. take away that question of like, oh, what am I going to, what am I going to talk about? We're like, well, you're going to talk about this, you know, we wrote this blog post for you, you better use it. (laughs) So yeah. So I think there's lots of ways that you can use, you know, these pieces of content and redistribute them. And that gives you the ability to be on more social channels You know, it gives Mm -hmm. you the ability, it's giving us the ability to not only have our podcast, but to fill our YouTube channel, to fill our Facebook uh, feed, to fill our Instagram posts, to fill my, fill Instagram stories. Like I'm snapping an Mm -hmm. Instagram story right now and I'm going to post it, you know, like there's lots of kind of different things that, that you can use social for. So yeah, I think that's really, um, a really important thing to think about. And again, you don't need to worry that people are going to see too much of you. They're not following you on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and everywhere else consistently. It's yeah. really not something you need to worry about. People have their um, their platform of preference, mm-hmm. you know, and that's yeah. probably the main one that people are going to see you on. So yep. that which just speaks to the importance of making sure that you're on as many of them as you comfortably can be, you know. But if you can't do all of them, do some of them. Yeah, (laughs) that's... Do something. Yeah, you can't... Yes. Something is better than nothing, right? Yes. Like, good enough is good enough, is what I'm saying all the time. (laughs) If you can only do Facebook and Instagram really, really well, that's a lot better than doing nothing at all. So... Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's worth beating yourself up over not being able to do 10 platforms at once. Yeah. Yep. I totally agree. Cool. Well, Sarah, do you have anything else that we should add to this conversation or? 
Um, hey, send us your Instagram and Facebook accounts. Yeah. I'd love to see them. I'm always, you know, we're on Instagram all the time and on Facebook, and it's fun to see what other realtors are doing. Some of you are doing some really great stuff, and I yeah, love getting it, ideas. It's super true. And if you ever are like, I don't know what the hell I should be posting. <laughs> I need help. Like, like reach out to us. You can uh, find us online super easy at luminaryagent.com. And that's our handle mm-hmm. for all of our social channels as well. So um, Sarah, this was a pretty good episode. One of the podcast. Yeah, this I'm is great. S- I'm super um, excited for us to be able to help people in podcast form. I think that this... Mm-hmm is a great way to get a lot of this really great information that we have gleaned over the years kind of out of our heads and into a format that people can consume and hopefully we'll be able to really help a lot of agents. So um, Mm -hmm. everybody, thank you. If you're listening, thank you for listening to our first episode. We are really excited to be here. We really want to be able to help the real estate community um, do better at, at social media and just really using social media to be authentic, to grow your brand, and to ultimately build your business. So um, I have been Cody Martens, the founder and CEO here at Luminary Agent. And I'm Sarah Jacquier, our content director. And thanks so much for listening, and we will uh, talk to you next week. Hey!